We'll talk about 13. All right, gonna go over all of the solving and justification for these problems. So I'm gonna take away four. I'll come back and write down my steps, but I'm gonna get three X equals 31 minus four is gonna take me to 27. And then my next move would be to, let me drop a pencil in here for my steps. Divide everything by three. That's gonna give me down, get me down to X equals nine. Now, maybe like Lena was saying, she's got a good practice. Substitution, three times nine is 27. 27 plus four is my 31. Um, so let me go in and justify now. My first step from the original problem to get to here, I use the subtraction property of equality. And then to get from here to here, I use the division property of equality. All of your test questions where you're solving, you have to justify each step. For all your test questions when you're solving, you have to justify each step. Perfect. Yeah, I did go around and take a look at them. All right, now moving on to number two. No, I saw it. You guys are all working. Um, I'm going to move on. I'm going to distribute first. 6x plus 3 equals 15. Then after that, I'm going to start my process of undoing. So 6x equals 12. I know I'm going to wind up with x equals 2. Let me throw in my division. Go back in, plug it in. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 1 is 5. 5 times is 3. It's 15. Good deal. My answer is correct. Now I'm going to go justify. From here to here, I use the subtraction property of equality. And you know what Emmanuel just was saying after I got done? He's like, that's exactly what I did. I drew the arrows and I wrote them down like that. Good, you're following my lead. Division property of equality. Moving on to number three. Um, don't overthink the half. Half of 16, half of negative eight. Two times over here. So I've got two parts that are distributive. Half of 16 is going to be, half of 16x is going to give me 8x minus 4. Half of 8 is 4. 2x plus 32 over here. Now, there's different ways that you can start, but my suggestion is to deal with the variables first and try to leave them positive. So that's why I chose to subtract 2x. If you did something different, just wait till I'm done to see if your method got you to the same x value that mine did. Undoing here, 6 x's is 36. x is 30, x is 6. And then let me go justify. I distributed. Then I subtracted. Then I added, oh, I see what you're saying, four steps to justify. Then I divided. I hope this is getting more natural for you now. Go ahead, Rashad. So, but two's positive, so you've got to undo it using subtraction. Jemiah? When it says justify each step, these that's worth as much, if not more, than your answer. AJ. Oh, I forgot distribute right here. Distri I missed it right here. That was a distributive property from where I started to the next one. Good one. I didn't distribute on number one, but number two I for sure. Good eye. Required. Again, almost... I, I'm thinking on your test, more points given to the justifications than the actual solving. Um, we did four, five, and six. I believe we did these yesterday. Some of you guys had answers on your page because the work was on a piece of lined paper. Let's just um, humor me, you guys. Get it on this paper, all the steps, all the work. I have to solve for V. And if I'm going to solve for V, I just have to divide it both sides by two. So that means that V is equal to P over 2. And did you justify division property? It's right there. Justify each step. 
And I think when we did this yesterday together, I don't remember talking about the justification. I do not remember talking about justifications when we did these yesterday. So, okay, yep, good, that's all right. So luckily I wasn't looking for that real specific when I walked around and checked your work. I'm going to just copy this volume equals pi r squared h, copy it down. I've got to solve for h, so I'm going to divide everything by pi r squared on both sides. Might as well drop in right now, that's my division property of equality. And actually, that's the only one I need. Once I do that division, this goes away and all the r's go away. V over pi r squared is equal to h. I think that's the volume of a cone based on the radius and the height. Volume is the V, radius is the R, H is the height. Now in 6, I know this one's going to take some space here. 6, let me rewrite it, S equals pi R S plus pi R squared. I think that problem in our notes packet was written reversed. We have to solve for S. So I'm going to take away pi r squared from both sides first. Subtraction property going on right there. S minus pi r squared equals pi r s. That again, subtraction property is the justification. Subtract prop of e equality. And then to get s alone, I'm going to divide both sides by pi r. That means I have to divide everything over here by pi times r. And remember that r squared is r times r. Let me just write it that way right now. I just kind of tried to write over the squared and write it as r times r. So when I go to finish this with all this division, s over pi r, divide out pi, divide out one of the r's, minus r. That's all that's left when I divide these pieces out. Divide, divide, little s. That was all division property. Now, when I move on to 7, lots of work with this idea that you have to justify a property using an if-then. If x is equal to y, then 2x is equal to 2y. So my question is, is what happened, Let's see what had happened was, from the if part to the then, what happened? They didn't add, they didn't subtract. They multiplied. What did they multiply by? So that means, so to get from, this is what it is, you guys, is if I start here and I get to here, what happened? Yeah. And so, like, if you kind of look at it like, how did I get from here to here? It must have been multiply this by negative 2. Multiply this by negative 2. Multiplication property of equality. Just no, you just needed the property. Just name what property it was. I put reflexive. No, reflexive looks a little different than that. Where are you guys getting reflexive? All right, moving on. How about the next one? If the measure of angle A is equal to the measure of angle B, and the measure of angle B is equal to 42, then the measure of angle A is 42. Which one's that? Add. It's not add. Is it reflexive? Yeah. It's not no. no, nothing was added. Let me look back. Nothing. Reflexive property. No, I don't agree with reflexive. Right. No. No, I don't agree with reflexive at all. Because when I go here, please listen. When I go here, there's this idea that like if A equals B, so the measure of angle A equals the measure of angle B, and B equals C, well, this must be the C we talk about. It's transitive. This is little a, this is little b. Little b equals little c. Then guess what? Little a must be little c, and that's transitive. Transitive property. And so that tells me that back here in 
two, four notes, you guys might want to go back and just make sure that you got your eyeballs on that. These properties, we're, I'm going to give you some more review and matching of properties when I see you tomorrow in preparation for the test. Right. So number nine is saying use the addition property of equality. If I know that the measure of angle J is 30 degrees, then the measure of angle J plus the measure of angle K, well, J is 30, and we don't know what angle K is, so it must just be this. So just like I anticipated, you guys need some more practice with wood properties. Reflex, you got to add in measure of angle K. This is 30. AJ, I'm going to move on. We can talk one-on-one -on -one in a minute. Reflexive property, GH equals, that's reflexive. It is what it is. That's what I call that property, the it is what it is property. And there's a couple reasons why we use it, and I'll make it a little more clear when we practice focus on properties tomorrow. So they're saying distribute, and I found just, uh, you guys know how to distribute, that's clear to me. Some people wanted to go ahead and say, well, X is 3. Well, it's not looking for X, it's just show me the distributive. It's not looking for X, just show me the distributive. Honestly, 